A switch statement is kind of like a whole bunch of if statements. It's a way of repetitively checking the value of a variable and then doing something based on that value. Let's think of something like time. Let's say we wanted a debug message to pop up and tell us the time whenever it's at the top of the hour. Well, we could write a whole bunch of if statements. It would look like this. We have if time is equal to one, like one o'clock, then show a debug message that says it's one o'clock. Then we can say if time equals two, show message it's two o'clock. And then if time equals three, show message that it's three o'clock. And it just gets too cumbersome. This is why we have switch statements. Here's the switch statement version of the same thing that I was just showing you. It's written like this. You start with the word switch, then in parentheses, you put the variable that you're going to check. As a side note, you can put other things other than a variable inside the parentheses, but for now, let's just deal with variables. Then you use an open brace, and on the next line, we start tabbing out all of our cases. Following the word case is a possible value for our variable that we're checking. So we can write case one and then colon. Then we write whatever code we want to execute if in case time is one. So just like above, we'll show a debug message that says it's one o'clock. We'll use a semicolon to end the statement. Then we use the word break. Break tells the switch statement that it's done. You don't have to look any further. We found the thing we're looking for. So you may not always need the word break. Check out my next video to see all the different ways you can use break. Anyway, on the next line, we have case two, then we show the message, it's two o'clock. And we do the same for three, and we can do this all the way up to 12. Now, if you want something to happen, if your variable doesn't equal any of these values, you use the word default. Then, after the colon, you write whatever code you want to have happen if your variable didn't equal any of your cases. So here I've written, show message, I don't know the time. One way to think of switch statements is kind of like rolling a die. Imagine you were making a board game in GameMaker, and you wanted to roll a six-sided die. Pretty standard for most board games. Every time the player rolls the die, we can store the result in a variable called die roll. Then we can simply use a switch statement to run code depending on the value. So I've written switch, die roll is my variable that I have in parentheses. Then I have an open brace, and inside, I have the six cases that are necessary for rolling a die. I didn't actually write any code, I just put a comment that said, do something. Sometimes programmers will do that when they know this section should have code later, but they haven't fully fleshed it out yet. Here's an example that's a little more pertinent to video games. This switch statement is checking the variable keyboard key. You'll notice it's in red. That means it's a built-in variable. This variable will check for the key that is currently being held down. So let's go through all our cases. Let's say we want this switch statement to be about movement. So in case we're pressing virtual key up, that's the game maker variable for up arrow key, then colon, we can change the Y value of this object by four. We'll use minus equal four to have the object move up toward the top of the screen. Then we can do the same thing for right, down, and left. We'll check to see if the arrow key right, down, or left is being held. Then we'll run some code to move the object in the direction we want it to move. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't always need break after each case. And I'm going to give you another example. It's very similar to the one I just showed you. This switch statement checks keyboard key again. However, you'll notice something different. After case VK up, I didn't write anything. But on the next line, I wrote case ORD W. Now, I haven't covered that, so that's going to sound confusing. That's just the way of telling GameMaker to check for a letter. ORD is just a short form function that stands for ordinary character. So in this case, we're using W. Now, you notice we haven't written any code yet, but on the next line, we write Y minus equals four. Then we break, telling the switch statement that it succeeded in finding what we were looking for, and it's done. So what this means is that if our keyboard key is the up arrow key or it's the W key, then run this code, then break. And we can do the same thing for down and S. What this means is that the player will have the option of pressing up and down to move his character or W and S to move his character. Either one will have this switch statement trigger. 
And you don't have to stop there. You don't have to write just one statement. You can write a whole bunch of statements before breaking and leaving this switch statement. So let's just review before I end the video. If you want to check a variable multiple times for different values, you use a switch statement. You put your variable in parentheses, and then in between two braces, you write all your cases. Each case is followed by a colon, and then you write all the code that will happen in case that's the value of the variable. And then you use break to tell the switch statement to stop, don't look any further, it found the right value. And that's it.